All right, sounds good. Sweet. All right. Gonna switch it over in three, two, one. Okay. Uh, quick start off. Uh, this is the least competitive of the two categories. Only I run this category, pretty much, because there's a few neat little tricks and stuff that are kind of hard. Uh, they're mostly just annoying to do, but I'll explain this when, they, when we get to them. Hmm, how should I do this? There we go. Perfect. Nice. But yeah. I'm ready to go. Let's see. All right, just go to the countdown when you're ready. Okay, uh, three, two, one, go. All right, uh, what we did there, we just skipped the tutorial. It's really long and boring and we don't need to do it. Because I kind of know how to play this game. Just a little bit. Anyways, this is a 2015 kind of remaster, re-update of an old uh, 2007 uh, indie game called Flywrench, of the same name, with uh, more updated controls, upgraded visuals, and especially the soundtrack, which I hope you enjoy because it is quite a treat. And the kind of, the, I, I guess, like gimmick of this game is that this is it's like a side view of the level, you're a spaceship in space, so you're being affected by gravity on each planet. So you're always being pulled down, so you have to counteract that and maneuver through different colored lines. And to start off, it's pretty simple. Pluto, the totally a planet, planet. Uh, the only thing that it has is white lines and red lines. Uh, white lines, if you're not doing like any input other than moving or standing still, then you'll be pretty much you'll you, you'll make it through. You'll be good. Uh, red lines, you press A to turn red, and you can hold it to stay red for as long as you hold the button. It's kind of your, it's called the flamp, it's kind of your jump to quickly it to something. It gives you some upwards momentum, and if you hold up while doing it, it gives you like a, about a double, a double the amount of like boost. So I'll be like switching back and forth between matching normal flaps and kind of super flaps, as they're called. And there's a downward flap called the anti-flap, which allows you to go down uh, without and turn red without having to go up a little bit and cancel your downward momentum, which was a problem with the old game. But yeah, that is Pluto done. Yeah, yeah we go by uh, in-game time on the leaderboards too, because it keeps a good, good track of it, and Load times, surprisingly enough, can vary enough in this game. It's, it, the whole game itself is like 160 megabytes, but it does weird things to different PCs. But yeah, this is Neptune, the first real planet. And uh, green lines. So that is activated by pressing X or holding X, if you prefer. It allows you to bounce off the outer walls of like each level, the yellow lines, without dying, but I'm in helmet mode, so I can do that normally without dying. It's kind of the easy mode, easy quotations, because it's still not an easy game. It just allows you to take a little bit of pressure off by just bouncing off like that, just bouncing off the walls without that sort of death. But yeah, once you uh, go into tumbling, which is what it's called, and you press X and turn green, your momentum is pretty much locked. Oof, man. And uh, you kind of just have to go with the flow. So this this uh, planet in particular is a lot of like, I guess like, say it's like mini golf trick shots. You kind of just hit it and hope when it goes in. Even though we know we'd have good setups. Sometimes it's just really just hoping. Well, because like if you uh, one thing I should mention like a lot, of, a lot of strats I go for I need to input as soon as I can gain control on the level and that's kind of hard to do because load times can vary slightly 
between each like planet and each level. You know, each run you do, it will be the same. So you kind of need to have a good grasp of what it looks like and just be ready. And you can buffer like the A input, but that is kind of hard to do efficiently because then you have to react with the other inputs. So you know, well, that's Neptune done. But yeah, uh, another uh, quirk about helmet mode is that once you're going through lines, like in normal mode, they kind of suck you through with a little bit of force. Uh, white to red and green lines, I should say. Just to make sure you make it through and don't... If you let go halfway through, you won't just uh, die midway through. So, in helmet mode, it, they don't do that. Mostly because you see that we destroy each line we touch as we go through it. And I say each line but I don't really mean each line that you see, because Uranus introduces pink lines, which act very similarly similarly, ooh, good, to uh, the yellow lines, but you can't bounce off them no matter what you do. Even in helmet mode, uh, you're not safe. Aw, oh, dang. I always, always try to go through this level without flapping ones. It's tough. And Uranus, Uranus, whichever you choose, is has the most levels, or I guess stages, whatever of each of any of the planets. Uh, it's not the longest, but it has the most, and it's kind of boring because it's a little repetitive. So it's a it's a good time to ooh, chill and just center yourself before you die on the next part of the game. There's a thing I could do here that I kind of wanted to show off, but it, I figured out it doesn't actually save time. It's one of the reasons why helmet mode is faster than our normal mode of this game. There's a few unique glitches that I will be doing towards later after the run. It, it's kind of a shame. I wish there was more applications of like the helmet mode glitches early on, because it's, it, it's a hard sell for stuff, because if you've already seen normal mode, it's like the same run for like 15 minutes, essentially nearly. But... Ugh. It's kind of bad. It's, it's... It has its merits as a category, so... And I can't really explain the glitches too well because they are uh, really weird and I don't exactly know what makes them do what they do, but I'll do my best. Uh, to anybody who hasn't played this game, you probably won't get it. But that's okay. I, I don't expect anyone to. Unless they have some experience with the game. So, next. Saturn. This gimmick is pretty sick. It's pinwheels. Moving pinwheels. Uh, and this chapter is kind of boring because y y you just have to wait for a lot of them, but. You can skip past a few of them if you squeeze through tight gaps like here. Cool. Neat. That, yeah, like that. That skips about a cycle, which is about a second and a half. About. Aw, oh, dang. But yeah, uh, later on in the game, once levels get harder, they'll be used to more for like speeding you up instead of making you wait. So it's this is generally referred to as like the auto scroller planet. It's got a good sound though, so that's that's a nice. There. It's about a second and a half saved. That one's a little precise, but there's a few more I'll go for. High octane, thrilling, action, platforming. Yeah. I could go into the lore of this game. But I, I probably won't because there is really no established lore. You have a spaceship, you have to go through each of the planets, starting from Pluto, breaking away inwards to Sun, beating every level to unlock Sun to be able to send a transmission to your home people, I guess. Home people. Uh, it's not established, but 
You're trying to get enough uh, to a place with enough signal to send out a distress signal. Or distress message. Good word. Nice. And I could skip, like, two seconds here, but that's uh, it's a dumb setup and it's not fun. It actually, like, hurts my fingers. Which I should mention, uh, this game is primarily... Uh, I played on controller, and it's like a half-half split. I guess... Well, there's seven people who run this game in the both categories. Uh, it's about half. Uh, keyboard and controller. It's there's no difference. Keyboard is better for your hands in the long run, and a little more precise after a lot more practice. But controller is a lot easier to start off with if you're more used to it, and uh, which I was. So you know, it, it kills my thumbs. Oh, I'm, thumbs are messed up now, but it's worth it. I can say that I'm good at a video game. Oh, uh, and if anybody disagrees that this is the best song in the game, uh, you should immediately never talk to them again and remove them from your life. So yeah, Jupiter, Gravity. Those, like, these, what I'm in now, these kind of weird off-brown kind of pits, they pull you down a little faster than normal gravity. I guess what the what those vocals in the song are saying. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes, that is the one cool strat in the early half of the run with helmet mode. There's that little gap. That's like the only thing like that in the game too, which is kind of sad. You can just slip right through and save like two, three seconds. It is incredibly satisfying. Gravity is kind of annoying because uh, a lot of levels, especially later, require you to make precise setups inside gravity, so you have to like... It, it, you're always kind of like fighting, like hoping to get the perfect setup, but it's really hard to do because you have to... Yeah, it's, it's nuts, but it, it's never like a turn-off, I guess. It's it's not as hard to make. I'm saying it's really hard and crazy difficult, but it's, it's not too bad. It, it, mostly just if you're starting off playing this game. It is pretty tough. Uh, the first time it was okay, but then it kind of gets a little bit unruly, and then the last planet, Mercury, is just complete and utter, like you're gonna get dicked down hard, to put it mildly. Alright. Mars. This game also helped me remember my order of planets. So, that's cool. Oh man, that was not intended, but cool. This is my least favorite mechanic, but it's really... It can be used in really creative ways to make cool levels. There was a custom level editor with user planets on the workshop. So it... Pretty wacky stuff gets uploaded sometimes. But... They pretty much fire about every second. Uh, they're always aiming at you, like, no matter where you are in the level, like, they can see you, th they're, they're just tracking your position, they don't have, like, a line of sight or anything. So it's like, they know where you are, where you just were, and where you're going to be. And when you're first playing this game, it is really annoying, because they will always manage to just hit you right around the corner. But at this point, for me, they're, they're manageable at least. Still annoying. Yeah, uh, I was gonna s <laughs> wait to talk about what just happened to later, but might as well get time. Uh, as you know, pixels are squares. 
so a line is not smooth. If you look really close, it is technically pointed, although really with squares, although like really very minute and really not important, normal guns, you know, but when you're in helmet mode, since you don't die when you touch the walls, your hitbox can sometimes get like stuck in the squares. It can be good and bad. There's, it's kind of useful for the glitch that I will be showing off in the next planet. But it's mostly annoying because you get caught and you stop dead and then you have to like figure out how to avoid everything that's going to happen to you, which you usually can, so you just die. But whatever. This is Earth. This planet is... Oh man, that's not strat, but uh, this planet is okay. This uh, mechanic is time switch gates. So these blue lines, if you get a switch it, for about... I should know this amount. No one actually knows the amount <laughs> for how many hours we all have in the game, in the community. We should. That's besides the point. It's about three to four seconds. Uh, once that's up, it turns back to blue, and the blue lines act like, just like the pink lines when they're not switched off. Uh, no matter what you're doing, even in health mode, they will kill you. So, to be careful. And due to the nature of how they work, you can sometimes get ahead of cycles and skip needing to get certain switches, but that doesn't happen for a while. Once they get more complex with it. In Earth, it's not really expanded on too much, so you'll see some bare mech minimum. Uh, this is a fun thing I can do. Dang. Sweet. Uh, that's about five seconds saved. You can you can do that on like any pinwheel really in the game, almost. You can get around it if it's going towards you, like in a clockwise. Yeah, clockwise direction. You have just enough wiggle room to make it by. You can do that. That one is like the only one that we can really do in normal mode because there's just not enough room on most others, but you can do a lot more. It's just all really precise and not worth the time it saves. And here, uh, those screens have popped up intermittently throughout the run. They always pop up at the same amount, uh, or the same after the same levels. It's kind of like that. Oh, I was a weird height bounce. It's kind of like, hey, you've completed this many levels. Would you like to go to this next, or this next planet, or the next planet ahead of it? Depending. Uh, each planet you can go to it after you beat a certain amount of levels. But it's kind of annoying because you have to beat every level in the game to unlock the final planet. So it's. In the speedrun, you can just kind of gotta hope that you remember where they are and input correctly, or else that's like five seconds down the drain each time. But luckily, that was the last one, so I didn't hit any. Here's uh, the second to last planet, because sun, the sun's not really you know, a planet for our purposes. The gimmick here is moving lines. Uh, ooh. That don't exp don't I don't know how to explain that one. That just works on that level only. Uh, anyways, they have like a set point where they go back and forth to like pretty slowly. You can see it like on the back. It's kind of like grayed out. Uh, they move back and forth between those positions and can be any color type. So you can plan yourself accordingly. They do offer some skip potential too. Not much, but a little bit. Like here. I can get it before it comes. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. That one's not too bad, but it's a little tight on timing. Here we go. Here's the big daddy of them all. Uh. Oh dang. If you, if you ask me, how exactly do you do this? I'm just, I'm wasting time at this point. I just, this level is like doesn't say a time to do it on, but I just really want to do it. Oh man, uh, you kind of get stuck, and then you uh, start tumbling, which you start tumbling while you're stuck in the wall, and then you quickly move your stick back uh, left and then right, and let, then let go, of tumble, and then you kind of make it through most of the time. Man, uh, 
we wish we could test this game so we could figure out how all these things work. Because, well, it's pretty consistent most of the time with, like, the setups that we know. It could probably be a lot more consistent, because it's, it's the reason why most people don't even touch this category. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. This too. Sit. Oh, oops. Uh, don't pay attention to that. <laughs> that one is even more unknown. You can zip, uh, if you couldn't tell what I was trying to do. Uh, cross long vertical lines that are going from the top left to the bottom right. Uh, diagonal, I should say. But it requires a very precise angle to control stick and a certain like amount of time to be held with your A button that we don't know. So it sometimes works, but most of the time it doesn't. Oh, wow, cool. So I don't usually go for it, but I figured I'd at least try it. If it happened, I would have just said, wow, I'm so good. I'm so cool. Look at that. I wouldn't have. Oh, man. This is... That's an interesting bounce. Yeah, that's... Helm mode is kind of fun in that way, too, because you kind of just bounce around a lot. You kind of... Hoping you don't nick a wall, because then you'll just start flying that way. But it's not bad. That uh, interesting flip method too, with like the t oh ooh, tumbling and then 45 degree and pop through. Uh, you won't see too much in Mercury here for until the second half. But you know. All right, here we go. This is the Mercury final full planet of the game. Spoilers, Sun is only one level, one long level. This is the granddaddy of them all. It introduces the mechanic of stupidly hard levels, which are made harder by me going for really dumb strats. I'm not gonna do that one. It's hard on, it's harder on helmet mode than normal mode. It features like the most skips and really tight strats. Of, uh, oh, that was Okay, <laughs> don't even know what happened. Of any planet, and also a great song, so I'm just gonna sh uh, shut up and just play. It's an inconsistent threat. about two-thirds of the levels in Mercury have a like some sort of like some sort of cycle skip pinwheel skip uh, just st stupidly hard strat to save just like one or two seconds uh, you'll know if I get them you'll know if I don't I'll probably make weird noises if I don't nice that level's called slick Rick not important information, but I feel it's necessary to know. Ooh. That was weird. Uh, usually when you're close to the planet, or the end of the level, you uh, get kind of, there's a kind of a gravity field around the end gate where you just get pulled into it. I, I just kind of shot past that one. That was weird. halfway point where the levels get longer and really complicated. Uh, each level is about usually to like 9 to 20 seconds about, which for this game is, or not, not 20, like 9 to 15, 16, which is pretty considerable for this game. And here's the hardest skip in the game. Only made a little bit easier due to helmet mode. Oh, cool. 
Well, I could go right into there and save about seven seconds. Guess not. Thanks, game. And by thanks, game, I mean my bad. This is a lost house, a, a cool skip. But I have an even cooler skip. I also lied about these being level, long levels because. Ooh, it's, that's not good. I'm stuck. Okay, there we go. That can happen often, but that's fine. Because uh, all except the last level now, you just go to the end. This one's my favorite. You just, uh, just uh, don't mind me here. Just, uh, mm hmm. Neat stuff. And once uh, the next level is the last level, and it's over really quick, so I'll make sure I shout when it's over. It'll be about like 15, 20 seconds from now. So yeah, that's that's Mercury. This is Sun. One level. Pretty long level. If you're doing normal mode. Helmet mode, we have the aforementioned tools in our arsenal. And, uh, uh, and time. Dang. It is normally about 25 seconds. But with that, you can make sun eight seconds long. Oh man, that was pretty okay. All right, that was a twenty-five thirty-seven. Oh sweet, according to me anyway. Ah, I wasn't keeping track myself. Sounds good to me. All right, so any any closing words? Uh. Well, the credits are a text file that you can edit, so that's cool. I may or may not have done that months ago and have not changed it since. Mm-hmm. Uh, excellent. <laughs>